Welcome back to a new lecture. This is number 14, and it covers topic 2.7, Colonial Society and Culture. There are two different themes, America and regional culture, and American national identity. The first of two learning objectives is explain how and why the movement of a variety of people and ideas across the Atlantic contributed to the development of American culture over time. The first key concept is the presence of different European religious and ethnic groups contributed to a significant degree of pluralism and intellectual exchange, which were later enhanced by the First Great Awakening and the spread of European Enlightenment ideas. Let's start with the population and its diversity. The largest percentages of non-English and non-natives in the colonies were enslaved Africans. After them was Germans, and then after them were Scots-Irish. The presence of Germans and the Scots-Irish will bring about diversity to the colonies in the form of language and religion. The development of print culture is something that comes up often. This means that printed material in the form of books and pamphlets begin to circulate through the colonies. While there are not many printing presses in the colonies, there are some writings that everyone around the colonies were familiar with, the most famous one being Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac. This was a book of information about farming, climate, weather, and even astronomy sometimes. A new edition was printed every year, and Benjamin Franklin would often include witty sayings or remarks as part of the information contained in the almanac. The freedom of the press expands during this time period through the Zenger trial. It covered the issue of libel in newspapers, and Peter Zenger, the publisher of the New York Weekly Journal, had published something that was critical of a royal governor that had been appointed to the colonies and was accused of printing libel because the things that he printed were damaging to the governor's image. When this came to a judge, the judge said it was not libel because whatever the publisher printed was true. Therefore, it opened up a Pandora's box of newspapers able to criticize colonial governments and the royal governors. As far as art and architecture, there are still a lot of European styles present in the colonies. John Singleton Copley and Benjamin West are going to be the most renowned artists during this time period, but the only new cultural element they add is their subject matter as they are scenes of the American Revolution. There will be more of these when we get into period three. For religious diversity and religious movements, there were a lot of Protestant sects in the colonies. Some Catholics and Jews lived in Maryland, but the colonies were very Protestant overall. The first universities in North America, Harvard and Yale, opened up as a way to train ministers in these different Protestant churches. Some established churches were supported through taxes, especially in Massachusetts. One major event in New England related to religion was the Salem Witch Trials in 1692. 19 total women were executed on the charge of witchcraft, and dozens others were accused. In the majority of the cases, the accuser was often of a different religion of the accused, and it highlights the fervor and paranoia that went along with religion in New England. The First Great Awakening was the first religious movement that was experienced by all of the colonies. It was a religious revival led by ministers like Jonathan Edwards from the British North American colonies and George Whitfield from England, though he traveled throughout all of the colonies. This was a different kind of movement because it focused on human sin and their need to repent in order to be saved. The movement was trying to focus on salvation and it led to splits within some of the Protestant denominations over the main way to attain that salvation. Since some of these Protestant denominations were being supported by taxes, when new sects arose out of the Great Awakening, there was a movement to separate church and state. That way, one church was not getting preferential treatment than others. As stated before, the movement is important beyond the religion because it was one of the first that all of the colonies experienced together. Before, these colonies operated as different separate entities with various identities that didn't always interact with each other. But with the First Great Awakening, it was the first time in which they all felt and experienced the same thing. Finally, on to the Enlightenment. This was an intellectual movement that began in Europe, but because of the transatlantic print culture, the essays that were being printed in England and the rest of Europe were being transported to the colonies. Colonists became aware of the arguments that these Enlightenment philosophers were making. One of the most important is John Locke. He was an English philosopher and wrote the two treaties on government, which focused on self-government and natural law. These resonate profoundly with the Founding Fathers in the next historical period. The next key concept is the British colonies experienced the gradual Anglicization over time, developing autonomous political communities based on English models with influence from intercolonial commercial ties, the emergence of a transatlantic print culture, and the spread of a Protestant evangelicism. By 1750s, the main trading partner of the colonies was Britain. About 50 or just over 50% of all trade goes back and forth to Britain. 
As inter interdependence grows, these colonies export raw materials and they import finished goods from Britain. Because the colonies are being forced to pay their imports with gold and silver instead of paper money, credit, or other goods, that leads to a reliance of paper money inside of the colonies. It leads to the colonies feeling slightly more independent from England. However, this interdependence and communication between the English colonies and England leads to the colonies adopting a more English identity. The majority of the colonists already were English, but even those that were coming from Central Europe or from Western Europe are adopting English ideas of citizens' rights without being fully aware of it. It plays out more clearly in the autonomous political communities part of the key concept. This could be simply any colonial government or legislature that exercises sovereignty over their own territory. Often they were based on English models, so a legislature that was found in every colony could be compared to the Parliament in London. Town meetings in New England exercised further autonomy and participation from congregation members. One thing that distinguished the colonies from England, however, were voting rates. In the colonies, they were much higher than voting rates in England. Even though they had excluded everyone who was not a white landowning male, due to the availability of land, there was a higher participation rate and more people were eligible to vote. Anglicization means that the colonies were becoming more British. One of the things that led to the colonies becoming more British were wars against the French and other European powers that the colonists also experienced in North America. Territorial disputes that reached North America include King William's War, Queen Anne's War, and King George's War. They were fought over the northeastern territory that borders Canada, now known as Newfoundland and Acadia. The second learning objective in this lecture is explain how and why the different goals and interests of European leaders and colonists affected how they viewed themselves and their relationship with Britain. The first key concept in this learning objective is the goals and interests of European leaders and colonists at times diverged, leading to a growing mistrust on both sides of the Atlantic. Colonists, especially in British North America, expressed dissatisfaction over issues including territorial settlements, frontier defense, self-rule, and trade. Territorial settlements and frontier defense go hand in hand. Colonists were eager to keep moving west as land was beginning to fill up. But because of westward expansion, more land disputes with natives and other European powers, and possibly more wars, arose. When colonists saw that the crown or the royal governors were not willing to guarantee continued expansion and defense for that expansion, it created a mistrust on the side of the colonies. When it comes to self-rule and trade, the colonies preferred to be left alone. They preferred the era of salutary neglect and any time in which Britain tried to implement more direct rule like they did with the Dominion of New England or when they tried to enforce the Navigation Acts, it usually led to problems. The lack of consistent enforcement made it easy to skirt the rules and therefore created the perception that the colonists were deviant smugglers or unwilling to follow the laws that had been passed. The final key concept is colonist resistance to imperial control drew on local experience of self-government, evolving ideas of liberty, the political thought of the Enlightenment, greater religious independence and diversity, and an ideology critical of perceived corruption in the imperial system. Some of the resistance that colonists carried out through the popularly elected legislatures was exercising the checks and balances they had over the royally appointed governors, like withholding their salary. It was a way for the colonies to show that they were dominant in these systems, that they were not going to just do whatever the English appointed governors were going to tell them to do. Even in periods of direct control, colonists continued to smuggle goods against the mercantilist policies that England was trying to implement. And the freedom of the press, as we explained earlier through the Zenger trial, had been expanded in the colonies and now newspapers like the New York Weekly Journal were able to freely criticize royal officials. Finally, for the recap on what you need to remember, the First Great Awakening and the Enlightenment and the Colonies know how they started, where they came from, and why they're important. The autonomous political communities, that's the colonial legislatures that are based on the English models, the transatlantic print culture, and the reasons for the rift between the colonies of Britain and the colonists' form of resistance. Thank you for watching. If you would like to watch the next lecture, you can click on the video link on the screen. And if you are looking for more practice to help you on the AP exam, you can visit apushlights.com. I wish you the very best in all of your studying and look forward to seeing you back on the next lecture.